It's important to standardize site boundaries to enable comparisons to be made between different modules. So for example, if we collected fish data and habitat data, we'd be, we would be able to know the influence or the relationship between the in-stream habitat and the fish communities that we collected. And it's the same whether or not bank flow profiles are collected or temperature. We now know that we've standardized the, the survey information so within a site, within a stream, we can compare the data. It's even more important when we start comparing data sets across streams so that we know that data collected say in southwestern Ontario and eastern Ontario are comparable and with the same proportions of riffles and pools we know that differences in fish communities for example um, are truly differences in the fish communities and not differences in the amount of habitat that was sampled between sites. Well we define a sample unit based on uh, a geomorphic unit and it begins and ends at a crossover and is at least 40 meters long. Uh, the way we define this is we define the lower crossover, we then chain the middle of the stream until we get to at least 40 meters and then we look for the next crossover upstream of that and that's the end of our sampling unit. A crossover is the location on the stream where the thalwag or the deepest part of the channel is in the middle of the stream. It is defined typically at high flow conditions or under high flow conditions. The velocity is actually its lowest at the crossover point and it also puts equal force on the banks and as a result the banks tend to be the same height on both sides of the river at the crossover point. Uh, it's also identified by having relatively uniform depth and uniform material type or, or bed material across the crossover. The best way to identify a crossover is having uniform height of the banks on both sides of the river. Uh, this is our best indicator because under low flow conditions, the river may have had enough force to move the thalway. So under stable streams, the deepest part of the channel will be in the middle of the river. Uh, less stable systems, the thalway may be at one side or the other of the channel, but the banks will still be the same height on both sides. So the best way to identify it is that the banks will be the same height on both sides of the river. Can you wrap it around that limb? The other way? And just keep going. The one on your right is uh, what's called a side channel. It's included in the station because its origin and outlet are both located within the site. The one on your left is a tributary. It's not included in the habitat measurements because while it has its outlet within the site, its inlet is somewhere off on the horizon. What are we up to? Uh, we're at 27.5. We need another 13 and then we'll look for a crossover. Mark here and then come up. Okay. 14 meters. All right. 14. 14. 14. The river's coming through. There's a crossover down below our 40 meter mark. So we've got to come upstream. The interesting thing is, look, you see how it goes into a step pool system here. And you can see how it's down cutting into the channel so the banks are different than they are down below that. We've got a crossover right in here. It's really high on the banks. It's about a four and a half meter, sorry, four and a half foot uh, height on both sides. It's uh, there's a cross over here, part of a step pool stream.